to the Villa of the Doves. It's a beautiful place. How happy you must be. Oh, my goodness. Who is she? The Lady Grantham I first went to work for. Granny! Why did you invite us here? Well, there are some of the trailer for Downton Abbey. It's returning to the big screen, and it is going to take you back to the end of the 1920s, back to England, back to France. The ensemble cast is back. Eli is back. Hello, happy Friday. Hello. Do I have to admit my embarrassing disclosure publicly? Eli and I ran into each other in the office. <laughs> Eli said, do you like, are you a fan of Downton Abbey? I said, I haven't seen one moment on television or on film. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll make you feel better, Heather, okay. because I'm I'm not exactly a diehard. You know, I could, I could do an essay are. on oh Spider-Man. Oh my gosh, many are. Uh, I know, I know. And I, I've learned over my broadcasting career, and especially with CBC, we have some major downtown, downtown devotees, and they love this franchise. I've had the privilege of interviewing some of the cast over the years. They're all wonderful people. I've done some binging, so you know, I, I, I have some familiarity okay. with the world, okay. but I would not say, you know, this is my, my particular area of specialty. All right, well, reel me in. Tell me all about this second film now. So as you said, we're approaching the 1930s, and what's really interesting about this new movie, it's divided into two main stories. Now, the first, as we saw there off the top, is a potential scandal involving Violet, the one and only dowager countess. She begins by inviting her closest family members around her, and as always, she can barely contain her impatience. Take a look. Do sit down. I've come into possession of a villa in the south of France. What villa? Start at the beginning. Years ago, before you were born, I met a man. They spend a few days together and he gives her a house. You never thought to turn it down? Do I look as if I'd turned down a villa in the south of France? Yeah, you don't have to know much about Downton Abbey to be able to appreciate the one and only Maggie Smith. No one does quivering disdain like her as the dowager. And there are some wonderful moments with Smith throughout this film. Now, it seems there may have been a bloom of romance earlier on in her life, and perhaps before the husband came into the picture. Now, remarkably, because things are ever so civilized in Downton Abbey, the owner of the villa, invites the family to come and inspect the property, sip cocktails while they discuss the arrangements. But as you can see, something else is coming to Downton, and that is moving pictures. Movies are coming to Downton because under that beautiful estate, well, the roof is leaking. They actually need some money. So they allow this film to be shot on the premises, leading to a range of reactions from the staff, including fan favorite, the butler's butler, the one and only Mr. Carson. Take a look. A moving picture at Downton. But the big old stars, famous ones. I think it's a horrible idea. Actresses plastered in makeup and actors just plastered. There is something about him, like a wild animal ready to spring. Ready to spring on you, you mean? And so this leads the downstairs staff to get to know a dashing director, the arrival of Dominic West as a Clark Gable-like actor, and Myra, a gorgeous leading lady with a voice like Edith Bunker from All in the Family. So a movie within a movie subplot and yeah. Maggie Smith, I mean, it's got a lot. What did you think of it overall? So here's the thing. This is the second film from the world of Downton Abbey. And to be honest, I did not love the first. I felt like it was doing a little too much fan service, a little too much stuff tying up loose ends. It just wasn't as entertained. But this is a marked improvement. Like Mr. Carson hovering over the table settings, it is an incredibly polished film. Every shot, every meal, every outing is picture perfect. The wardrobe is a wonder. These people's closets must 
must be like Doctor Who's TARDIS, bigger on the inside. And, you know, I get it, Heather. I understand the appeal. This is the cinematic equivalent of water wings in a pool, right? You're always going to be safe. Nothing bad is ever going to happen to you. This is a world where all the drama is contained and miniature. Everyone are nice. It is beautiful. It is buoyant. This is a place to escape to. And once you acclimatize to the picture-perfect setting, the music wailing in the background every moment, it has its charms. The slow boil of the mystery as the family and friends dive into the past of Violet and Robert Crawley worries about what might happen to him, you know, his parentage, his lineage, while well, back at the estate, the film becomes a talkie, forcing the residents to actually lend a hand. Talents are uncovered, women are tempted, and some of the most beloved characters are given a fitting send-off. There's even a minor subplot for Barrow, the one quietly queer character who sees a chance for a new life. Now there is, I will warn you, an air of finality Ooh, to events, but who knows, Heather, given the popularity of this series, I think we could be following the Crawleys into the 1960s. Oh, well, that, that sounds good. But wait, before you give your number, somebody like me as you, and, and you with limited exposure, would, would we still enjoy it even if you haven't followed the six seasons on television and the previous yes. film? It's still? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I did. Because you sold this me with on this wife, with the cinematic who, equivalent of Water Wings. Who could miss that? <laughs> <laughs> I went to see this with my wife, who has never seen an episode, and I... She had a great time, so okay. I think uh, totally this. I, it, it, you're, you'll be fine. You'll be entertained, um, distracted, and uh, and amused. So okay. There you go. All right. Give me the number. Three and a half stars out of five.